So I got this game called Patch Quest three days ago, and I am obsessed! Nearly 100% completed it! It's like Pokemon meets a roguelike bullet hell, but like easy mode bullet hell? Because you are also a bullet hell to the enemies. Like these blue things? My bullets. So it's like a bullet hell and a bullet... Bullet heaven, then? Is that a term? This is not a genre I know, like, anything about. It's like right between bullet hell and bullet heaven. So is it bullet purgatory? It certainly feels like it. It's been my whole life for three days in a good way. All I need is to find this one thing, and I can't! <laughs> but we're not here to talk about genre semantics. This game pulls some inspiration from Pokemon. You've got these super-powered creatures that you catch Pokemon Ranger style, and then you ride around on them and have them use their own attacks and powers, and they got abilities, and there's all kinds of- their names are all portmanteaus! This is literally Pokemon, and I love them. And I love them so much that I'm going to now briefly explain each one because that's what I like to do here, and I want this game to get significantly more attention. Let's just briefly explain all the monsters, starting with the rodent category. We start with Shampoo, one of my favorites, a defensive powerhouse able to make bubble shields. Shampoo is able to sweat soap, keeping it clean all the time, hence the name mixing shampoo with shrew, which is what it is, a little desert shrew. Shrews and chinchillas are famous for taking Taking dust baths, and this game's desert zone is filled with aloe vera plants, which is a very common soap ingredient, so there's loads of reasons to combine these elements. Shrub Hog is a prickly, brambly shrub, and a little wild hog, a boar, who naturally have thick and prickly fur to protect them from just that shrubbery. Boars are not rodents, though, and well, it's here because it's also a hedgehog. Literally, hedgehogs also have their own prickly bits. They just also can mirror it on some hog parts. Klanga is a kangaroo rat that goes clang with its large bolt pierced ears, and tail rings. Like many mice and rats, it likes collecting garbage. In this case, machine parts. Skurrit! It's a skunk turret, really good at firing poisonous gas from the tip of its tail gun. Because what else is a skunk gonna do? Roll a dillo. It's an armadillo that rolls. I mean, what else is an armadillo gonna do? Apparently they have skin that is harder than steel, but it resembles denim. And a hat. Looks like a little skater boy. A little punk. Rolling around like a skateboard wheel. Now, Molem and Gamol. A mole golem and a radioactive mole golem that releases gamma radiation. Yeah. Being made of crystals and minerals certainly makes them golems, and living underground with their big mole claws. Yeah, it's great. I love that both of their attacks are very similar, but Gamols are poisonous because radioactivity. Another group of rodent monsters with many variants are Zurol, Raccoon, Folair, and Saberfloof, all based primarily on saber-toothed squirrels. And all being squirrels, they of course have cheek pouches, which lets them essentially carry more ammo. Zurol is the most squirrel-like, and it goes zrrr with its electrical hum. It is electric type. Raccoon mixes in some Ice Age raccoon elements. Folair adds a flare of fox, and is fire type, because, you know, fire and foxes. And Saberfloof is fluffy, or floofy, and is self-described as an evolutionary missing link, perhaps the ancestor to all of these other saber-tooth monsters here, as it is only found in the fossil zone, which also has lots of reptiles living in it, so let's talk about the reptile monster category next. Bronze Bronzai is another one of my favorite monsters here, it's so cute! It's a Brontosaurus Bonsai! It's able to make other little bonsai plants that act as additional turrets for you. People typically think of bonsai trees when they see the word, but it actually just translates to mean planted in a container, which this dinosaur's back certainly is for that plant. Though as an art form, bonsai is defined as an ornamental plant, usually a tree or shrub, grown in a pot and artificially prevented from reaching its normal size. Sort of like how this monster is a brontosaurus. Several similar dinosaurs are among the largest creatures to ever live. And yet here it is small enough for you to ride it around like a horse with ease. Tyreg is a little baby Tyrannosaurus still trapped inside of its eggshell. It's a common pop culture depiction for dinosaurs, really. And that's about all there is to it. But you're able to use its super move to make it hatch into a Tyrage. A raging tyrant of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Or should I say Rax? because it has an axe for a tail. Turtle, Shelaton, and Toratois are also variants of each other. Though, Turtle is the only turtle. The other two are tortoises. But this Turtle swims not through water, but through tar pits. And Torrentois releases torrents of water from its shell, Torkoal style. Ashes, in particular. And Shelaton is just bones. It's a skeleton with a shell. 
It's a Shelaton. Copra is a copper wire cobra. The scary face on its hood is able to terrify nearby monsters, making it easier to land their strong but snaky attacks. Combustile is a crocodile with a combustion engine inside. It's simple and cute, and I love it. Then Magellan is a chameleon which changes its color constantly. I mean, what else is a chameleon gonna do? But this one has a top hat because it's also a magician. It makes itself disappear, like the insects it eats. Like Berserker. Honestly, one of the more creative designs. I really like it. It is a buzzing berserker, a violent class of viking. How perfect for a wasp of sorts. Also, I love the name of its main attack, Bee Siege. Bee Siege, cause it's a viking. Yeah, this game is full of puns like that. All, several of the moves and even most of the plants in this game have names like this. Scorpenter is a scorpion carpenter. It's got protective goggles that keep sawdust out of its eyes as it saws wood in half with its wood saws instead of pincer claws. And it even has a little step drill tail. Triantula is a tarantula with a triangle. And it makes lots of triangular attacks too, and webs. I mean, what else is a spider gonna do? Interestingly, there are a lot of spiders with triangle-shaped bodies. Hypnoth is a majestic and soft moth with beautiful swirly wings capable of dizzying and even hypnotizing foes to do its bidding. And Antillery is an ant artillery cannon. Every shot it makes is bigger and more powerful than most. However, when firing, it is slower. Artillery cannons don't really move easily. This is the same ability the skunk turret had, too. It just, it just makes sense. Pyrefly and Liarfly are fireflies, and the classic drama masks, comedy and tragedy. Like many pyres used to burn witches, the tragic Pyrefly is able to haunt you, making you see ghosts. So even more projectiles to avoid. But the ever-happy comedy Liarfly has a lyre on its head, a classical instrument that typically is used in peaceful, happy music. Think like a classical bard trying to swoon someone. And then we have Lightling, Brightling, Frightling, and Nightling. Four butterflies that are pretty much what you think they are. They're different butterflies with the same moves, but different types and abilities of sorts. But there is also Rainbow, a king who reigns over the other butterflies with its rainbow of colors. He was was genetically modified in a lab to combine all of the other four. And the last in the bug category is Mantari, a praying mantis samurai. Notice the samurai helmet on its head and it using its blades like a sword, but it is mainly found in the Zen Zone, which is filled with many kung fu references, such as mantis-style kung fu in this case, and a monkey-style kung fu in the case of Shinobo. A shinobi bonobo. Shinobi being a high-level ninja, essentially. It also throws shurikens and can covertly put monsters to sleep like a ninja. Oh yeah, we're talking about the beast monster category now. And another beast monster found in the Zen Zone is Pandit. A panda bandit, constantly seeking out insect hives to steal their honey. Just like its other variant, Bumble Bear. A bumblebee bear. Supposedly, them being striped like this helps them sneak into hives unnoticed to steal the honey. Man, bees are dumb. Puffalint and Maloon are puffed up balloons and are also an elephant and a mammoth. They're so silly when they're big, and they just get bigger. Oh, they're so cute. Lunon and Stellon are lions. A lunar lion and a stellar lion. Moon and stars, or moon and sun. Leo is one of the most famous constellations, after all. Deerdrop is a deer with dewdrops falling from its antlers. It makes lots of rain. It makes me think of the Greek goddess Artemis and her deer companion, as together they can control the weather. Ramber is so stinking cute. It's a ram whose horns are made of amber, fossilized tree resin, which has this iconic color. And there's also snooth in snorticeps. Sloths move so slowly that algae and sometimes even full-on plants are able to grow in their fur. And in this case, it's a mushroom. And it's so sleepy, it snoozes all the time, hence its name. Uh, but at least the mushroom grants it some mushroom power. It's able to like plant mushrooms in the ground and they fire more projectiles. Um, but in the case of snorticeps, that mushroom takes control. It snores all the time, maybe to take in more spores, as its mind has been taken over by the cordyceps on its head. This is the kind of mushroom that takes over the brains of small insects and zombifies them. Think Paris and Parasect, or The Last of Us Zombies. Snorticeps is a lot bigger than an ant though, but uh, it's just so slow that the mushroom took hold anyway. I like how its eyes are all psychedelic out. <laughs> it's sort of like Mucktopus, swirly eyes. 
Let's talk about the gooey monsters now. Muktopus is an octopus covered in muck. Gross icky goo that also lets it camouflage really well. Just like octopus. Brillyfish is very straightforward. It is a jellyfish that is also an umbrella. Wow. Poi slug. I love tremendously. It is too cute. Even if it is just a poisonous slug. Oh no, are the XIs implying it's not immune to its own poison? Snapalm is a snail with a propellant shell, allowing it to be fast despite being a snail. Its slime is also very flammable, like napalm. It sprays it out with its spray palm attack. And then there's the gels. So lore, there's these little pink alien slime critters that pop out of meteors and they may in secret be trying to mimic the inhabitants of the fossil zone, think like Ditto. And these next five monsters are the results. Jellosaur, Gelatois, Gelatops, Gelostrich, and Magellion. Basically, they're just pink gel-based variants of the original monsters, but with the Jellify ability instead. Fun. Jellostrich, or Jellostrich there, is pulling from Velostrich, or Velostrich, the pronunciations. Uh, there's also Fostrich, which is a fossil ostrich, and Velostrich is an ostrich with a high velocity, because real ostriches are very fast. And I like that these monsters are combining ostriches with raptors, particularly the Velociraptor, if the name is to be believed. Proto feathers and all, that's what these guys are famous for. Which now brings us to the winged monsters category, where we also find Steagull, a seagull that steals. I love its thief mask and its prisoner stripes. It's so good. And I really like how when they attack you, they steal your ammo. By which I mean, I hate when they do that, but I love the idea. Yin Yowl and Yang Growl or Yang Growl are Yin Yang owls. And they make you sleepy and are of course found in the Zen zone typically balanced with one another, and they even have the ability to summon a smaller version of the opposite one to reference the opposing dots in the yin-yang symbol. And Pectra is on the spectra. It prefers communicating with colors more so than words, I guess. But uh, I, I don't know, I just, I made that up. But it's a pecking peacock with crystal tail feathers that can refract light in the entire light spectrum. And Bombat is a bat that's also a bomb. Wow! And Puvin is a penguin that is also a clay oven. Double wow, but at least it can bake cookies inside of it. Its super move creates a small army of gingerbirds, like Gingerbread Man. Though the description states that they're made of clay? Like clay pigeons? Huh. Well, well, I do appreciate flipping the script and making a fiery hot penguin. And Snowdo is a dodo in the snow. Hence it trying and failing to keep itself warm with its scarf and earmuffs. But I love its egg lay ability. You just get little dudes little babies to help you. But it's got nothing on our first amphibian monster, Tadpog. Yes, it is a tadpole frog, and yes, it is really making the pog face. Oh boy. It is a Suriname toad, those ones that carry their tadpole babies in their backs. Gross. But here, it can launch those babies and have them grow into so many frog allies. I love having a whole frog army of them. It's very poggers. Tattooed is fun. It's a toad. It's got a tattoo, so it's tattooed. Yeah, it's really just a poison frog toad thing. Um, but Crocamel is interesting. It's a croaking frog with camel humps? Where did that idea come from? Well, maybe it's from the often viral desert rain frog. I mean, it lives in the desert. What is a frog doing in the desert? They need water. Well, it turns out they have very good water retention, like a camel. And here, those camel humps are also referencing wavy sand dunes. Sandamander is a salamander that lives in the sand. It's salamander frills resembling the headwear of pharaohs and other Egyptian nobles. I mean, look, it even has the little eye of ray makeup and the like little ray symbol on top. How fun. And then Amplicute. It's very cute. It's a newt with amplitude. It's able to generate electricity, like many swamp dwelling creatures, really. And speaking of all that water, let's end with the sea monsters. Styrol is a spiraling starfish, and that's about it. It spins. It's a starfish. It's like a throwing star. What else is it gonna do? I do like that when you defeat the bigger ones, their arms split off and they become smaller styrols, because starfish have some of the best regenerative abilities. Ooh, now Wolfen and Borka are really cool. It's a wolf dolphin and a wolf orca, which says bork. Or bark. Rough. Yif. Not yif. They do not say yif. And combining these two animals isn't random. It's a wasgo, or a gonkadet, a wolf orca hybrid creature from the myths of the native Pacific Northwest people, mainly the Tlingit and Haida. Way cool. And then Skeel is a seal that skis. Yeah! 
Uh, Quatris is a hermit crab with big claws and an even bigger fortress of a shell. Cragnet is a crab with magnet hands for pulling metal things out of crags. Galvangler is an anglerfish that uses galvanizing techniques in its hunting, meaning it shocks things with electricity. And last, but certainly not least, we have some seahorses. Yes, 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 is literally a seahorse horse. But wait, no, they are striped. This one is black and white. And what are their names? Ah, uh, yes, it is Seabro and Zebra. These are Seahorse Zebra. That is way more fun. Uh, and you know what's even more fun than watching this video? Playing this game for yourself. I don't even like bullet hells, and yet I love this game. It's baby's first bullet hell in a way, the same way that Pokemon is like baby's first turn-based RPG, you know? I should mention that there's even shiny hunting in this game. You collect plant pins, and there's a small chance that they'll be shiny. You can increase that chance by raising, like, a difficulty bar, but, like, still, it's fun. It's so fun. This video is not sponsored whatsoever. I just have been obsessed with this game. I took a day off. I extended my weekend to to play it more. But now that I'm doing a video about it, was it really taking time off? Hmm. Go play Patch Quest and never stop using your noggin.